Good morning, everyone. Bre welcome to breakfast. It is, oh my God, the 5th of December. Year's almost over. How are y'all? I have, a, I got a couple questions. Um, I have a lot, to, uh, what's the right way to say this? I'm juggling a lot this morning. so to speak, with the Greybeards, um, which of course you guys will see come to fruition. But um, more importantly, I'm going to try and pull something off this morning that I'm trying to stay simple, guys. That's what you want. But the market does give us what it gives us, and every once in a while it does give us an opportunity. Um, What's my number? What is my number one goal here? Can anybody tell me? Yes, but more in depth, Al? Well, I know things that you probably don't want to know, but Susan, but yeah, how, how are you feeling, Timmy, by the way? I want you, I want to make you better terms, absolutely. Um, I want you guys to to think and see through my eyes. I want you to understand my thinking process, even sometimes if it's kooky, okay? Sometimes it's quirky, um, and it's always evolving. Does that make sense? I suppose I should have added on the slide, adapt or die, but um, I'm always, this can be, well, We'll see if this is fun, or if you guys scratch your head and say, this guy's a loon. Um, you know, if we did the same thing all the time, if I made every the same trade, I do make the same trade 99.99% .99 of the time. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I see something and I go, hey, I have an idea. And, of course, sometimes it falls flat on its face or... The idea is I see something, but it's not really there. I think I see something, but it's not really there. Does that make sense? How many times do you see somebody, you think it's somebody, then you look at them again and you go, oh, wait a second. I do use the same process pretty much all the same, all the time. That's why I call it making the donuts, right? Now, if I showed you the same trade over and over again, of course, after a couple months, you'd say, okay, I've seen that trade 94 times in a row. I think I really don't need to come back again. Um, so I do, you know, do you see every trade? No. I'm trying to show you trades that have nuances in them because I want you to move forward as traders. And I also, I want you to see, you know, if, in a certain sense, every facet of my mind. Shane and I talked about this last night because this trade had, had come to fruition. I wanted to make sure that, and this is before I did any work on the presentation, if there was, if I would be able to present this. How about that? And Shane said, absolutely, go ahead and present it. And that was the first time Shane had ever seen this as well. So, and he was scratching his head. <laughs> so, anyway, should we go at it? First, I'm going to show you an easy, is it an easy trade? Here, let's do this. And ask, and again, we talked about this last session. Ask questions as you go. If you see something and go, what in the hell are you talking about? Or, I don't get it. Or even just, wait a minute, but what if, just ask, okay? That's the only way we're going to learn. Okay, we have until about uh, 8.30. I don't think we'll go that long, but please somebody give me a heads up before that because I have to go to Dr. Gary's. That's like crick in my back. All right, here we go. Price fluctuates. We all know that, right? And Wes, I will get to looking at your questions, by the way. I just, I haven't. I also have to answer about 30 from Gary. Uh, I don't think Gary's here this morning, but Gary will be joining us shortly every morning. Okay, Fujinami. Um, I think I have this quote wrong, but you go ahead and read it. It was very late last night. It was, it was, well, very, it was very late for me. It was 9.10. 
and I don't. Then I looked at it this morning, and I, and I thought, okay, I don't think that's exactly what I meant to say, but never mind. I'll leave it on anyway. Oh, back one. And yeah, I stole this from visualdictionaryonline.com because I did it about five minutes before the session this morning. So my thank you to them. You're allowed to use it as long as you leave the visualdictionaryonline.com thing in the center. Um, it's a lever, yeah? Or... For those of you that played in childhood, yeah, teeter totter. Right? Seesaw, even better. Thank you. If you apply, if the force applied here is greater than the load over here, of course we, we go up, right? Make sense? If the force applied here is less than the force applied here, of course we go the other direction, yeah? So if you think about this, as the market moves, if we're constantly making higher highs and higher lows, we're applying more force to this so that this side rises, yeah? Make sense? There's more bidders. There's more mass over here than there is over here. Similarly, once this cycle gets pro broken, and uh, Shane and I don't know if you're here, Maceo. Maceo, are you here? I know some people are walking in late. Maybe not here yet. Anyway, whales have more force. Well, sometimes, see, so yeah, absolutely, whales have more force. But also, Perry, sometimes, you know, just like the uh, you saw the the thing that I did yesterday, the midday session. Were you there, Perry? That just happened to me one more buyer. That was just it just happened to be the moment of despair. Th that wasn't a case of you know, I tried to buy half the company. That was just literally at one person who we did the math last night, Shane and I. There were five hundred million five hundred million shares, okay? He controlled fifteen percent of that, but the but the company held 55. That was a one-off opportunity. That was not a trade. You should never look at that as a trade. That was me looking at the probabilities and saying, you know what? I like the probabilities of this. I'll keep a little bit of it. Notice I didn't take the 15%. I don't want much of it, but I thought it would be an interesting thing. But in the end, to get within reporting limits, he's not a big hedge fund manager. Uh, and the top 10 are not that large. This is the top one or two that are huge. Um, he had to get he had to get rid of 160 million dollars to get within his limits after the close, and he had 20 minutes, well, 19 minutes by the time he got me on the phone. That's experience. As I'm seeing a lot of yeah, and 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 going right on the spot. What's what are my risks? Evaluating my risks and saying, eh, you know what, I'm up, I was that, at that point I looked it up. I was up 106 percent for the year. I thought. Oh crap! I mean, I'm having my second triple-digit year. The most that happens to me is I'll only be up 105 percent. Yeah, I'll do that. You know, I hit. I could do it also because I had a nice little padding in the bank, right? So, anyway, think about this fulcrum and the lever. And sometimes it's not the whale; it's just one extra person gets on this side and changes everything, or one person gets off this side and changes everything right can you can you can you get that it's the net mass all right first i think if i have this set up right yeah this is 20 minute aussie this is not what we're going to do but it has a similar concept and i haven't prettied this up because this is a trade in progress the the uh, graybeards worked it over last night they're still working it and uh, we now have the system set up so I can draw and they can draw so if they put in a stop if they draw on their page it shows on my page so I don't even have to call them unless I say what is that so this is Aussie this is some line from back before Mars like I said I haven't cleaned it up yet because we're in the middle of a trade and um, so I was I was doodling when I got home from Disneyland. Oh, by the way, 
I did get something from my wife and kids at Disneyland. They gave it to me uh, last night. It's a great, it's a, it's a teacup. Big, it's a big fat teacup, big one, because I like to drink a lot. It says, beneath this grumpy exterior beats the heart of a dashing hero. I was, thought that was nice of them. Anyway, and my wife got one, once a princess, always a princess. So the kids got that for us. So anyway, um, so I'm just doodling, and I look at this, you know, I draw on this median line right here. See it? Nothing special. I have no idea if it's going to, I'm doodling, okay? I don't know if this is meaningful, meaningless, whatever. And I, I, and I am dead tired. The only reason I'm looking at this, <laughs> Timmy, I did not. You can do it. You can do it publicly. I did not do the photo in front of the castle. All of the kids did because Jeannie and I couldn't get to that side of Disneyland because Lucy lost her ticket. So I gave her my ticket. So my wife and I had to stay in California or whatever, the other Disney part. And uh, we couldn't get into the old part, but, which is okay because we've been there before. So we have their picture in front of the castle, but not ours. Um, and the pictures came out good. Plus, we have them in the ocean, and we have the four of us together at a couple areas in the park, which is pretty cool. And my wife and I have my wife and I have a romantic one um, in front of uh, the Hollywood area. So it'd be pretty. I'll show you when they come. Anyway, so I'm just doodling, okay? Nothing more. And and I'm dead tired. I drove 10 hours from L.A. The uh, traffic was awful. There was a huge accident. I found out yesterday. That in that accident, unfortunately, I mean, these people were driving poorly. They were driving a truck. They were in the wrong lane. There were two trucks plus a truck with a camper, a long, big, long camper, RV, whatever you call them. And the truck with the RV couldn't handle 85 miles an hour. And a truck behind him hit the camper. And the truck and the camper went off to the right, off the shoulder. And the... 18-wheeler also went off to the right on the shoulder. Both of them were supposed to be going 55, not 85. It was right in front of us, probably, you know, 50 cars ahead. So we were able to, I mean, everybody jammed on their brakes. The people right behind me went to the left, so they didn't hit me. And um, we're, we got to the accident scene long before the police did. And we couldn't tell what was going on, except we could see the camper and the truck down there. We thought, hey, those people just passed us going 85. And they shouldn't have been. So, um... I found out yesterday from the mayor, Dwayne, that uh, the guy in the in the uh, the two people in the truck were helicopter uh, helivacked out, and uh, the the person in the 18 wheeler died. So uh, we would have been and the and and I 80 or I 10, excuse me, was closed for seven hours. So I mean, if we had wait, if we had been like. I don't know, a minute later, going past the scene, I would have got home, you know, at 1 o'clock, no, it's not 1 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. People just camped in their cars, nowhere to go. Yeah, it was terrible, but they, you know, that's why you don't drive like that. So anyway, tra uh, traffic was awful, and, you know, we got back very late, and I couldn't sleep, so I said, well, maybe if I just go charge for a few minutes, I'll get tired. So I drew this. I went to bed. I, I think it broke the triple O's right there. And I, I just went to bed. And you can see I didn't even clean it up. I just went, eh, wonder what will happen. Everybody with me? Nothing special. All right, I get up in the morning. And it's made an excursion lower. Okay, could. That's fine. Now it's middle of the day. It's not doing much. But I got my eyes on it. Oh, I go, boy, I wish I'd taken that trade now. Right? Quick, quick hundred pips. Didn't take it. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't know where I would have gotten short anyway. Yeah, no, no, I don't see the entry. And I, like I said, I was, I was a zombie at this point. So, yeah, I... But I would, boy, wish I would have got that 100 points, right? How many times have you done that? Yeah, I saw it as a terminal point. Yep. Well, this is what I was thinking, to Rebecca. This is literally where I stopped. Triple bottoms. We're popping over the median line. Will it continue to head out, or is it going to run out of energy and pop right back in? And then we did this. That's where I went, oh, that's interesting. 
I wonder if it'll keep going lower because it it blew out the triple bottoms and we had you know lower highs that's all that's what I was thinking I did I didn't actually didn't think anything more Rebecca and then when I woke up I went oh well never mind I, did, I see the frequency based on the structures to the left that suggests a terminal point yeah well wait there's there's more yeah I was thinking that and I was thinking okay I wonder if it'll repeat. How about that, Rebecca? Do you ever do you ever get that feeling? It did it once. Will it do it again? So I'm just keeping my eyes on it. And you know it goes down about the same amount, maybe a touch more, and springs out of the hole. And yes, we are at lower levels. In the sense that we're at the median line, not the not the upper parallel, but same kind of action is here, same kind of action. Look at here and here. Similar. Now see if you think it's similar. Take a look at here and here. What do you think? Is that logical for a pivot? Well, it is an area that it should run out of energy if it's going to run out of energy. Right? The median line. Now, it's been a sloppy median line, but I could put the warning line. You can see that this is just about the warning line. And this is a little below the warning line. So, you know, I'm okay with this. But notice this. The slope of the skinny boy and girl. Yep, the blue median line so far is holding it. The slope of this little boy and girl is the same as this slope, right? See that? They're like twins. And I'll bet if I went to the left and looked at Rebecca's first one, they were probably triplets. These frequencies do pop up and go through. So I got the graybeards watching with me, and they're, you know what they're thinking at this point? If you had enough sleep, that's what they're thinking. No, no, they're thinking, Are you, have you had enough sleep? Doesn't look that exciting to me. But then I drew this in, and I said, okay, think about, hang on, Kareem, it's not time to trade. Think about this. Yeah, I wish I could move it. Uh, think about this as the line of force. You see it? This is the load over here, and this is the lever right here, or the fulcrum. See it? Now here we have our teeter-totter. Now notice that we've been breaking lows, right? So the force is really for lower highs and lower lows. Roll that around for a second and think about it. Make sense or make no sense? So I'm I'm literally explaining this to the graybeards, and they're like, "Why don't you just draw simple median lines?" Why? Why all the? <laughs> did, you, did you see something at Disneyland that made you think of seesaws? Did you go on a teeter totter or something? I was like, "No, no, no, no." You know, we've been actually talking about these in, in uh, market geometry recently, and you know, maybe I'm seeing them in my sleep, but I, it also makes sense to me. All right, so let's watch. So I watch it, da, 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 and I and I and I I mark my pivot, and then I say, okay, well, let me widen it out for you. So you can see it's not making the upper parallel, and now I get some nice separation. No separation here, but no upper parallel. No separation here, no upper parallel. Now I get a test, a retest, nice separation. A retest, go ahead and get me short. So I got the graybeards get me short. See it? Anybody got any question there? I didn't again I didn't clean this one up, I didn't mark my pivots, but you get the idea. Alright. This no, this one's still ongoing. Let's see what the boys did overnight. 
next bar. I didn't get to enjoy this one, so I was in bed at this point. Wish I'd been awake for it. Just to, I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep if I'd seen it, so that's fine. <clears throat> and again, this is Aussie 20 minute. Nothing special. You guys can go back and draw this if you want. Um, continues lower. Now, here, this was my idea, actually. Oh, i got to go back. This was my idea. So you think the red median line is going to be the upper median line of the pink. Oh, it's a yellow. You know what? I don't even remember this is a median line. This isn't a median line. This is just a line. Hadn't thought about that. That would work, too. Hmm. Damn. Let's see how that works. Why not draw the bigger median line? Um, well, you know what? It's a, it's a darn good question. Anyway, again, um, ask these questions because in actual point of fact, I probably would have been better off, right? I just drew, I was trying to, trying to draw the lever and the fulcrum for the, for the gray beards. Then they said, okay, what about your profit target? So I use this as the low, this as the high, thinking of the fulcrum, right? And double the range. Because this was such a skinny median line, The risk reward on this, of course, doesn't work. But, like I said, this thing was in triplets. If I thought about it, what is that? Why is that high logical to me? This high or this high? First high or second high? First one. It's the, They're the same high, Al. Plus or minus two ticks. Made no difference. I'm, at this point, I'm drawing quick for them. Because I'm trying to go to bed. I'm literally, my wife is knocking the door going, hey, you know what? You had a terrible night's sleep last night. You need to go to bed. So I'm drawing really quick. So I just grabbed this high. I could have grabbed this high. It would it would it would have been no difference. All right. Or two tick difference. So. So maybe the warning line of this. If I can grab it. Let's do a little art here. That's too wide. That looks about right. Um, so anyway, you can see what I was thinking was just basically, this is the low, this is the high, double the range. That gives me a target here. And I and I left them with that. I didn't see that. Okay, we're short. I said, okay, we're short. Okay, here's my here's my you know you got my stop working. Okay, you got my idea for a profit. And I just left it at that. They know what to do. They know how to move stuff for me. This is a step better than the Bank of England, who was they could look at my charts. I don't even have to explain to these guys. They've been trading long enough or executing long enough for me that they know how to trail stops on, you know, swings, et cetera, et cetera. Make sense? All right, so I go to bed. We get below the 50% area. And I told them if we get below 50%, I really don't want to snug stuff up. I want to just let it. I'd be willing to take, get stopped out of, above 50%, but try and let it run to the bottom if it gets below that. So... We get up here. Uh, this should be here, but there's the price. <coughs> Actually, this should be here. So when it, when it takes out this box, they put in this stop. And we're all the way to the upper parallel. 
at the moment. Now it's Wednesday. And you can see it's not doing a whole lot. I mean, we're making money. Time's on our side. We're making money, but it's not doing a whole lot. And um, <clears throat> now it's dinner time on Wednesday. And this is yesterday. Yesterday, I was so tired. Even though we didn't have a session, I was just dead. So I was like, you guys are on your own. And so let's see what happens overnight. So that's where things are at at the moment. Oh, we're not done yet. That's the good news. Or the bad news. Making lots of... There's, there's live. We're at basically 90 cents. With a stop at 90.70. And I just let it play out. So there's a live one. And let's see, where's our profit target? It's not, it's not that far away. 89.70, we're at 90 cents. Yeah, 30 cents. And it might end up actually being this line, actually, now that I look at it, which was the big median line. So, I don't know. There's a live one for you. Squeeze in? Sure. So that one's that one's ticking away. I've got a Canada longer term. I'll just I'll just flash it briefly. No, I'll flash it briefly, and because uh, it's getting close, and we looked at this. The profits, the upper median line. We'll see if the Bank of England, or sorry, the Bank of Canada will let it. I, I'm, I was working. I don't know what he's working right now. He hasn't drawn. I should, I'd call him, but we're busy. Um, here, I'll, give, I'll send him a message. Watch this. Mike. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you the entry in a second. Uh, he was working at 107.30 when I went to bed offer maybe they still are <coughs> and this is one for those of you that are in the evening session um, next the next session in two weeks we're going to be hunting more squeeze sure we're going to be hunting hunting wabbits that helps you we're going to be uh, looking at um, a currency pair not a dollar pair but in the last time I took a position in it don't try and guess um, the, the trade went on for 23 months but I got an idea which is generally dangerous but I like the way the charts starting to move in so we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that anyway so <clears throat> But you might, do. that's good, except you might have to wait two years. But it was very profitable. It was $29,000 a contract, so. But it would take some major uh, fundamental changes in the world. But I, I they kind of work for me. So anyway, um, this one's live and working, and we'll see. And um, I'll ask them, and I'll try and flash on Monday if we're not out. Even if we are out, I'll have them. I don't know why the profit stops and stuff are not marked on here, but I might have grabbed the wrong chart. But anyway, now let's go. Now let's go to work. Ready to go to work? Everybody ready to go to work? Again? <clears throat> yeah. I. A lot of this depends on me being adept at present at presentation. All right. So it's 20 minute yen. And it hasn't been doing much of anything. But you know my partner, he's 
you know, I get home and I call him and he's talking to me about the yen. And I said, anything going on? He goes, no, that's the thing. There's nothing going on. I said, oh, okay. So I get up the phone and um, look at the Aussie, start to draw on the Aussie. Then I'm waiting for the graybeards to do their thing. And then I say, oh, what, what can I draw? So I start looking at the yen. So I just draw some stuff in and this is about where I go to bed. Get up in the morning. Here's the breakfast session. So, what do I, and I draw in all the lines right before the breakfast. I get up, remember, I get up three hours before the breakfast session. I draw in the lines, and what do I see? We were making new highs, and the lows were holding. This low held, this low held, this low held, this top got broken, this top got broken. Everybody see what side of the market we're on? Now, I don't, this is going to go right back to the question that we argued about last session. To me, this is not a significant pivot. Why? Because we were already in that pattern over here, weren't we? The lows were holding and we were making new highs. Okay, nothing has changed. And I don't know where this pivot, where this particular pattern happened. So to me, I don't know where this actual pivot falls, not necessarily in the price range, but more importantly, in the logic range. I want to know when the logic changes. Not, not, do you see what I'm saying? Show me when we went from the highs were holding and the lows were getting okay al let me let me explain show me i want to go i would yeah i'm not going to go back because i don't I, i'm tired and it right um west you're good that's too many balls for me to juggle right now this one is I'll, I'll go back and look afterwards if you want okay let me stop and refocus hang on stay on this chart for me you can ask all you want on this chart but just stay on this chart all right here you go al Highs are getting broken already over here. Do you see it? <clears throat> Lows are holding. Do you see that? And this low is actually the same as this low. It's just that it's got a slope so that, it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, okay, hang on. S just stop with the pivots. Listen to me, Shane. We had this argument last time. Listen to me. This is meaningless to me because I don't know where it is logically relative to everything else, right? I don't know if there's a low. And, you know, if you want to go back and look and see if there's a lower low, there might be. But more importantly, I need to know where it went from the highs were, were, were holding, here they're holding, and the lows were holding, and now we're, so now we're breaking up. When did this change? And from here, I can't tell. Okay, I'm in the middle of this action. Remember, we're trying to do action, reaction. Shane, do you understand what I'm saying? This could be something and it could be nothing. I don't know. Because I don't know the logic of where the, where the logic changed. So I don't know where that pivot is. I also don't know in spatial relationship where it is. I don't know what it is. It could be a sideways shift. Sure, absolutely. I don't know what it is. Maybe you're drawing. All right, so I don't know what it is, but it's something. But I since I don't know what it is, I'm not going to mark it. Okay, Shane? Get me? I want to see the beginning of the logic, meaning at any given point in time, we have to let it play out to figure out the logic. Well, for me, I don't really want to start marking until I start to see the logic. Susan, whether it's a change of behavior or even something as simple as, okay, all right, the ranges have held, now let it double the range, and if the double the range holds and it turns, those types of things. Or, you know, because that's 50%, those types of things. I want to see, see some logic play out. Right here, I have no logic. I just know that this is holding, but 
I don't know where it started, and I don't I don't know spatially where we're at. So I'm just going to watch it. Okay, I don't have I don't have to trade. I have no urge to trade. And and by the way, this is midnight. I mean, I barely, I got home like right here, so. You know, it's not time for me to trade anyway. It's, it's time for me to be asleep. All right, so now it's, I'm getting up and I wake up and it's still in the same pattern, making higher lows, higher highs, right? See that the pattern hasn't changed? Now watch. There's a low. There's a high. See the battleground? There's a low, low holds, low, another low, break to high. Still working, right? It's like the Energizer Bunny. But I don't know where this started. See, that's the point I'm trying to get across. Is everybody wants me to mark this pivot and call this A, B, or C. But I don't know what this is. I just know that we are in the middle of something that is repeatable but I don't know where it started so for me I don't I'm not interested in this all right let's look at the next one we get a high now we've got a low and a high all right I don't see why third blue line is significant one two three um, you know what I marked you know what why is this one significant I was Shane I was actually trying to mark the the, I mean, this is the smallest possible pullback. It's a one-bar pullback. See it? One-bar pullback. Even that held. It's, is it significant? Boy, it's barely significant, if it's significant at all. But even that held. And I threw that in there on purpose so that you would you could see that even the, even the smallest line, nothing was getting broken. Follow me? Even if it's not significant, it's not getting broken. How about that? Give me that. <clears throat> All right, so now we get a new battleground. I got a low and I got a high. All right? Now let's see what happens. High gets busted. Still playing out, right? All right. Spritting to the upside. You can hear the kids up and then going to school. I'll leave it low. I mean, I don't even bother to mark them here because, you know, I could mark this one. This one gets busted. See it? Still working, right? Everybody see it? Yes, and the bars and the bars are getting longer, which in time base means volatility is picking up. Absolutely. Yep. Good. Good read. All right. So maybe that's my marker. So now I leave a low. Back at the highs. Leave a higher low. Leave a high. Here's my battleground, right? Anybody got any problem with that? even higher low so now we're squeezed in I expect this high to get taken out it's happened every time it's happened what ten times at least but I don't I don't know if it's happened ten times or 47 times I just know that it's happened a bunch of times in front of me that's why that pivot wasn't if that was a pivot that that point was not significant because I don't know where it started. Now does it make more sense? Shane? I, I don't know where that is. That might have been the one, but I don't know. Okay, so all right, so now we're up here and we're squeezed we're squeezed in. I do expect, you know, things to blow. We'll see what happens. Nothing range. Nothing range. First one to give. And you can see that's when I marked, 
I drew this so that you can see that's when I put in this marker. I went, huh. I wonder if that's, I mean, it barely gave. I wonder if that's a change. I'll need more than that, but I wonder if that's a change. Follow me? But it's nothing I'm going to trade off of yet, but it makes me wonder. Okay, now I think that's okay. That's a change in behavior. So this is a legitimate alternate pivot for me. Shane, would you agree with that? Maseo's not here, so I guess I can't. Okay, it's, impo it's important. I want this is a follow through from last time, part of it, that you understand why I mark what I mark when I mark it. Okay, any questions to this point? And no, I don't have a trade yet. I don't have a trade idea. I just have an alternate pivot. Okay? <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's moving lower, but I'm in no I'm in no hurry. I'm nothing if not patient. Okay, when I get a wide range bar lower and no follow through, sorry, when I get a wide range bar lower out of this range, I go, okay, this is ML1. That looks really significant to me now. Follow me? I don't know what this is yet, but this is... And then I've got this. Remember I talked about B and A are not quite as important as C. So I'm just going to leave that hanging there for right now. Inside bar. Huh? Why did I mark it when there was a wide range bar? It's enough. Okay. This has to do with extension and flowering, Wes. There's enough extension and now enough of a move to the downside that we may flower at some point, right? Well, yeah, Shane. I mean, I could mark it right here. But if I mark this as a pivot as well, do I really want this meeting line? It's so... It's so skinny. This really makes me feel like it's it's broken out. Uh, it wasn't so much the three lows as much as it was, okay, um, all, this is almost despair, if you will, compared to everything else. And on top of that, now we've got a nice range. A nice down, nice downside motion good well in size so for flowering so to speak or range extension either one I'm 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 that's in my mind right now cuz I'm doing the IB thing so I'm thinking about I've got enough of a downside movement that this is no longer I mean this looks like what does this look like it looks like it might be a pendulum pullback see it this doesn't if I, this this is Enough to say this this might be significant, but if this is the pendulum pullback, I'm not going to trade that, right? And I've got lower highs and lower lows, right? All right, so let's see where this goes. Disregard the zero. Then we get a wide range bar higher. When we get the wide range bar higher... That may that makes me go like this. I've got one. All right. Then I guess this was significant. See it? Yeah. And I don't know where A is. I mean, I I think I know where A is, but I'm be I'm guessing that this is probably significant as well. And I guess I could 
I could I could do this and should do this just for good order's sake as they say <laughs> Okay. Any questions? Price's job is to make a new high now. You are correct, John. Now, let's think forward, John. Let's you you and I, just you and I. You ready? Why did you mark MLB? Well, Okay, Al, you get to think forward with me as well. You ready? If that bar did not take out the higher high, does that... Can, 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 let, me, let me answer this first, and then I'll come back, okay? John and Al, you ready? So I've got a, a nice excursion down. And now I've got a nice pull back up follow me can you imagine if this swings job is to make a higher high can you imagine that this is the end of the lever or and this is the fulcrum somewhere in here lever Fulcrum. I don't know where, but somewhere in here. Can you imagine that? Yeah, could be is the right answer, but can you imagine that? Anybody lost on there? I'll flash the I'll flash the fulcrum picture back up for you. You're lost? Okay, Wes, watch. You have to turn it around, but there's a fulcrum. We've got a high. We've come down. Now we're making an upward excursion. It's Archimedes. It is Archimedes moving the world. Yes, it's exactly what it is. Did that help anybody that was confused? If you're still confused, tell me. Okay, Jose, watch, watch now. Watch as the chart unfolds, and then see. So if price doesn't move higher, then the fulcrum is weak. Uh, that d no, not necessarily. Let's go a few hours and see if this helps, okay? If I get to the fulcrum, and the light doesn't go on, then, then we'll see if we can explain it. So we make a wide range bar, and we haven't taken out. I mean, we're, it's the same high, basically. But I expect it, because of this, I expect that this was a pendulum pullback. Everybody knows that that is, right? I could have traded for it, but that's not what I was looking for, because I didn't have anything to mark down below. So I'm, I'm doing this as my first. If I was doing that as my first, I might have been trading for this pendulum pullback, but that's not what I saw in terms of logic. I'm unwilling to chase things if I don't have logic because I find that then for me the probabilities degrade. But that's just me. Alright, so now we do make a new high. Everybody with me? Okay, let's see what let's see what price gives us. Just look at what's in front of you. Nothing else. Okay? Everybody look? Look again. Okay. Look again.
look again. So now we've got a wide range bar and one, two, three, four, five. So we've got six bars that we're looking at. With me? Jose says seems to be wedging. Did everybody hear Jose? Jose, you ready? Seems to be wedging. See it? I didn't say it. Jose, who was still scratching his head, said, seems to be wedging. Jose, do you see it now? Next bar. Seems to be wedging. Do you see it, Jose? Shane, you see it? Wes, you see it? Kind of. Okay, ready? Kind of works for me. Do you see where I got the frequency? Does anybody not see where I got the frequency? All right. Next bar. We're making new highs, but I connect the wide range bar high and the low of the bar that springs out of the hole. Do you see it? Why? That's a darn good question. Ready? I see the fulcrum, the wedge that Jose was talking about, and I see this. Sorry, which wrong one? I see Archimedes. Why did I put this frequency on? Because I saw it. And then, when the next bar popped, it makes perfect sense, Al. This is the high of the fulcrum. This is the low of the fulcrum. This is the high of the wide range bar. This is the low of the spring out of the hole. Yes? No? Kinda? Sorta? Sorta? Al, give me a sorta. Oh, you're with me. Okay. Anybody saying, what the hell? Where's the fulcrum? This is it right here, Perry, Petra. But just watch. It'll it'll get more. It'll get clearer, I think. I think. Now, you don't need this to trade, okay? You don't. This is, uh, this is me... This is the physicist in me. I'm, I'm thinking when I get there. How do, well, how did I see that? This is, again, Al. This is the physicist in me, and I'm actually thinking about something, which you'll see in a minute, and may well, which you may see in a minute. How about that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to do something that I've never done, and as far as I've known, as far as I know, no one's ever done. And I don't mean like a double backflip, but all right. So we make another higher high. With me? Let's leave the let's leave the lines behind for a second. Another higher high. I need these explanations based on physics. Extremely helpful for me. Good, Rebecca. I'm glad because you're. I've watched your trading just flowering. Your understanding of the markets. So you're one of the people that I go. Okay. It's, you know, I can see it working in some people. And for some people, I'm sure they're scratching their head wondering why I bother. But believe me, after you can ask Rebecca. After a while, it does start to sink in, and you do start, you do start to go, okay, now this makes sense. It's not just highs and lows. Although you can make money on the highs and lows. But some people actually like to understand why. And I'm, and I'm one of those people. All right, so we make another wide range bar higher. See it? Closing on our high. Looks bullish as hell, doesn't it? Let 
but I have this in the back of my mind and now we're making new highs and now we go up and leave a high now nothing's moved we haven't done anything yet hang on a second now remember when I talk about a C point I have to mark it within how many bars five right okay so here's one with the one in mind knowing that I, I've got four more okay to, so I not so I don't dirty up the picture I'm going to expose a little bit for you let's assume do you want to see that you want to see the C pivot first before I, and then I'll go back okay watch two three four okay at this point I think that's I think that is C and I think that's three I can even go five if you want but see it all right now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move these over yet because I don't want to dirty up the picture um, actually, I think I have enough room. Yeah, I don't even think I have to move things. So it's AR from the fulcrum. Uh, yes and no. How about that, Shane? Let's do the standard. Let's do the standard median line, okay? And this is the only way I could do this, unfortunately. I... There's the standard media line. Why would that be C? I have to mark within five bars, Wes. Okay, I have to mark, I can be wrong, but I have to mark within five bars, okay? I can be wrong. So, does it, ha here's, let me ask you this question, Wes. Does it have to be the right, the correct C? No. But I have to mark within five bars, so it has to be a C. It could be an incorrect C, but it has to be a C. Follow me? And Igshan says lower, lows, lower highs. At this point, according to my rules, I got to mark it. It could be wrong. One bar will make it wrong, right? But let's just go with what we see. See the median line? How, what's that median line do for you? Not much. That's what I'm thinking. That don't do much for me. Not too exciting. Are you willing to put a lot of money on the table on this? But I see something. Shane saw it earlier. Maybe he, maybe he remembers, maybe he doesn't. Do you remember what you saw, Shane? And, and by the way, take a look at... Take a look at the... B C line and take a look at its epicenter if you will where is it right in the middle of the fulcrum isn't it all right that puts the little wheels in motion in my head because I was seeing the fulcrum then I draw it and I go, hey, hang on a second here. Follow me? But this median line sucks. That's the best way to put it. I like the BC. I hate the median line. 
the pivots work for me. So maybe z zero, zero is the center. So what would that look like? You see, Jose, you got it right down. So let's change the properties on this. I'm just going to take out the BC line for a second. It'll pop back in in a minute. And I'm going to make these um, dotted lines. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there's the original median line. I can see what you're going to do. Use the fulcrum frequency for your entry short. Okay, good. Do you think I'm crazy, George? Same frequency as the top four bars, says Shane. Uh-oh, people are front-running me. George says maybe a little crazy. Ikshan says maybe crazy. Okay. All right, so now let's see what this one will look like. No, no, you're you're doing fine. Don't worry about it, Shane. You're doing fine. So I need I need the BC. Here's the BC back in it. See it? And it bisects the fulcrum as well. So I like that, right? There's my 50%. I like that. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop for a second. So that all of this, that part makes sense, doesn't it? Hang on. Yeah, that's the question. Where's A, right? Which is why I still have this down here. Okay, so then I'm, I'm scratching my head. This is a different, you've seen me do reverse median lines, and if you've read my book, you know about reverse median lines, right? You use the BC, then you change the A. Follow me? Now, this is a whole different way of doing a reverse median line. And hopefully it's got physics involved in it. And it might even be one step cooler than that if I'm right. I think I see something. I, I intuit that I might, for the first time, have drawn something. Let me see if any of you guys can guess what I think it is when I pop it up there. Mad genius or just mad? There's my A pivot. What do you see? Now remember, this is a reverse median line. Symmetry, yes. Double the range, yes. Where else do you see? Double the range implies 50 and 50, right? Where else do you see that? Not a regular median line. Where else? A modified shift. Timmy's got it. This is up 50%, over 50%. For someone who knows Jack, are we not fitting the, running the risk of curve fitting with this median line? Well, that's always the risk with a reverse median line. However, I'm using geometry. Rather than just curve fit it, Igshan, by going up and down and up and down, well, all I did was up 50%, over 50%, here's my A. And what is that? That's a modified shift, isn't it? Now, I've done reverse median lines, but I've never done a reverse modified shift. And I did it without... I mean, I have this frequency, but I haven't looked to see how it's going to fit on the lines. So now let's see what we get. So let's now let's put the median line up. 
Any before I do that, any questions? And I could be a genius, a mad genius, or just mad, no doubt about it. But I do want you, if nothing else, I want you guys to go, okay, this is what he's thinking. Now let's stop there and look. Now let's look at it. In some respects, the A is the middle of BC. Yeah. Sure. Why not? This is the fulcrum. Zero to zero. Here's the swing point right here. The question is, are the buyers in control or are the sellers in control? This is the balance point. That's right. Yeah. Right? To confirm your line of thinking, you chose this reverse modified shift because the regular median line was weak looking. It wasn't weak looking. It was crap, wasn't it, George? I wouldn't trade that median line with your money. And I could have just done... Remember, I was trying to do simple trading and unfortunately this is not end up being sitting um, simple but when I saw this I was about just to just abandon this to show you the the Aussie trade but I got I got caught up in the physics of it all that's all why did you pick median line two can you explain that again here okay yep Box, box, broke out. I mean, it's, it's clearly broken out of this whole thing. I, I don't have two in place until this spurts out and takes all of this out, right? But that that's the idea behind it anyway. Questions on that before I erase it? Okay. All right. So just looking at it, do we have any questions? Anybody lost? Anybody got questions? Let's not go any further unless we're good. All right. Just wait. Hang on. I have three questions, but I will wait to the end. Maybe you will answer them as we go along. Probably not, BJ. Because it gets pretty simple after this. Jose, what's your first question about the first O? Only reason I marked the O, actually, this shouldn't have popped out. I just wanted to show that this is the fulcrum here running to here. That's all. I just, I, I actually was going to go back and make them hash marks. Why did you do that instead of the next bar for O? Well, this is where I got my frequency. This is the wide range bar that springs out of the hole, and this is the wide range bar that springs out of the fulcrum. That's all. I what, BJ? Why draw a downward frequency between 2 O? Remember, this is only copied from this. And when I saw this, I, I like the frequency. Remember, a lot of times I'll draw a frequency and it goes nowhere. When I saw this frequency, and then I went, you know, this frequency connects the wide range bar that springs out of the hole and the bottom of the wide range bar that springs out of the fulcrum. That's all. Why short now? We've been making higher highs and higher lows. You must be looking for a blue to blue as a target. Okay. The load on this fulcrum. You know, there's another box that sits over here. You know that, right? If there's one more person on this side, the market goes up. If there's one more person on this side, the market goes down. Buyers and sellers, right? Does that make sense? I mean, there could be a billion more on this side or a billion more on this side, but it can literally be one. If we're in balance, if it's one on one side or the other, it determines where we go, correct? Okay, so... I like the frequency. I like the fulcrum. The fulcrum seems to be in place 
the geometry seems to say the fulcrum is downsloping, which means we have more force on the downside. Then when we make one, two, three, four, and we're still making lower lows and lower highs, with this geometry and this logic broken, this logic broken, now this geometry, now this set of bars, I'm willing to put one stop on the line. No? You did not mark zero, zero as your pivot. This isn't my pivot. You know what? Here, hang on. It just meant that's that's the fulcrum. That's all. You did not mark zero as a pivot. Is this because your lows are higher, unlike where you mark C, where the lows are lower and the highs are lower? Well, before I even read that and answer it, BJ, does that help? Zero, zero just meant to de delineate this high and this low. That's all it meant. Okay, it was after the fact. I put in the zero, zero when we were up here, and I was just trying to pretty up the picture so that you guys could see it. And zero, zero, delineate, you know, it's got... Zero is a number that I might use to mark something, so that's probably the wrong choice. So I, I should have just used hash marks. Zero, zero were just symbols. Yep. So hash marks are better. Now does that help, BJ? And what other questions do you have? And are there other questions? Let's not move forward. What I don't understand is why do you think the sellers are in control? Okay. We had one set of logic going on and on and on and on and on and on. Right, Al? Now that logic got busted. Okay? Now, I don't have a new set of logic in place yet. So, in a certain sense, I'm logicless. I'm forming new logic. This logic was in control. Now it's not in control. I'm looking for logic that makes sense. Where do I find it? Frequency and the notion of a fulcrum that formed, this high is the same as this high, that formed when price broke out of its logical upward pattern. So you can think about it this way. This is a pendulum pullback. Or maybe this is a pendulum pullback. Yeah, I know it's extended, but maybe it's extended, but there are more sellers than there are buyers when it gets up to the top of the pendulum. When the seesaw reaches its highest point, maybe this is as high as these people can these people can let it go. And at this point there's more pressure to the downside. Even seesaws go up and down. Sure, this could be a pendulum pullback. And it could be a pendulum pullback, and this is as far as it goes because there are more sellers than buyers. It is extension, but it's limited because of, I don't know if it's one more seller, two more sellers, a million more sellers, whatever, but it's limited. That That's one, one bit of math further than we want to go. There's a way to do it, but I don't really think we want to go there. I just want to know if we can get the concept. As geometry, what do you think? Or how about this, as art? Okay. Now, let's see if the geometry makes money because I'm not I'm not paid to be an artist right now I do show this to the weird beards and I got to tell you this was not one of those it's a good thing this is these are 20 minute bars because this was not one of those I mean if, if I just shown, shown a median line and not told them where it came from they would have went yeah okay I got it but their first question was why is it sticking in the middle of nowhere I said it's a reverse median line Oh, so you curve fit it. 
Well, not really. So that we went into this discussion. And, you know, lots of scratching heads. All right. So I said, you know, you'll get it. I got a mark within five lines. Okay. Here's the fifth bar. I like the range extension. I like the lowest close. I'm a little concerned that I'm not going to get up here to get filled. Make sense? Looks like we're pulling away from the upper parallel. It looks like there are more sellers than buyers. So if it gets up there, anywhere near the upper parallel, I tell them, get me in. Okay, they get me in. Had a second chance. And I like to close. Lowest close on the board, right? Five bar rule. Here's what I think. When I have either an energy point, if this was a down sloper and an up sloper, or when I'm marking C, after five bars, I find that it is stale and you have to have a test and retest. Just to reconfirm the price isn't now going to just take off. So if you want test and retest, I mean, we're short right here. Same thing. That's what we have going on here. But I have to mark within five bars. Otherwise, I watch. I'll still mark the same pivot, but now I have to start over again and wait for the retest. With me, Kareem? Same thing when we get to an energy point. Five bars on one side, five bars on the other side is fine. Anything outside of that, as far as I'm concerned, the energy point no longer is an attractor. It's dead. It's, uh, its gravity is gone. Okay. Next bar. Okay. I like E. So after five, you would wait for a retest. Yep. And this, this is a test and retest. Test. See it? I'm asleep at this point. But they know what to look for. I'm, I'm about to get up. I'm not up yet, but I'm about to get up. And I get up to see this. Okay. So far, so good, right? Targets? What do you, th what do you think the targets were? Well, you could play double the range, all kinds of things. I just spilled a big lump of tea on my shirt. That was smart. Always look when you drink. No ideas for targets? Squeeze, please. Yes. I got a lower purple. Pink to pink. Yep. That's lower purple. Lower median line. Okay. I mean, we could play double the double, but that's not going to give you as much risk reward, but maybe that's the... I always seem to go for pink to pink. No. I did one... Uh, I think the last one I did went just medium line to medium line, but time saved me. I, I mean, you know, to get five to one, you kind of have to. What about prior low before the ML2? Um, prior low before ML2. This one? <clears throat> sure. Why not? Well, let's just do this. That's certainly a possibility. If I can find it. There it is. All right. MLB looks like a good target if you get time on your side. Okay. 
Do you mean the prior low or do you mean the lower parallel? One second, let me stop screwing this up. Okay. <clears throat> when so the middle line when it hits at MLB. Okay. Uh, when you're stalking a turn like this, do you require fast results? Still interested if it bounces out of your geometry sideways. Target at least purple to purple. If you're right, down move could be substantial. Um, Kyle, pretty much, if you know, if we're somewhere over in here and I haven't traded, pretty much I can find another median line. I can go ahead and do that, and there are times when I will. Um, for example, when we look at, the, we go back to the Aussie, and you can see I use the median line, not the upper parallel, right? So that's kind of what you're talking about. We'll, we'll, we'll flash that at the end. And then the down, yes, the down move, if that's all the pullback there is, then the down move can be substantial because that means it's weak as a kitten, so to speak. So the middle line when it is hit at the median line. So you're saying this intersection right here, Jose? The clue seems to be the dashed pitchfork bottom line. Well, if, if that's what we get, let's just see if that seems to be the minimum target to me. Let's let's just measure that out. That would give us, we're risking 15 to make 58. I guess, um, I'd have to ask the, the, the beards. Actually, I'm measuring off the wrong bar, so hang on. Maybe that's why I asked the question. <clears throat> I'd have to ask the beards, but if they followed the rule, we're risking, I think it's 15, to make 54. Lower pink unless time drags you out of you, out for you says Rebecca. So I get filled on this bar if they're following the rules and they're pretty good at following the rules. Okay? Does that work good, Sean? Because it's been five, so we need a test and a retest. Right? These are written in stone. So in other words, if they filled me here on the sixth bar and it was a loss, I mean, I wouldn't shoot them. But I would say, hey, oh, they can go inside, Ikshan. Remember, they can go up to 30 pips. So they might go, they can go 5 pips, 10 pips inside. We're only using a 15 pip stop here. Look at the, look at the ATR. It's 10. They used a 15 pip. If I measure it, it looks like to me. But they could use 30. So they could go inside to get filled after the test. And if it gets up, they're going to they're gonna make sure it gets filled. That's why they have discretion. Executing is an art. And these guys are as good as I am at geometry and finding trades. They're that good at executing, if not better. How about that? Am I a better executor for large? Sure. Are they better at what's going on moment to moment? Sure, because that's what they're doing. Their brain is wired after most of them have been doing it. Well, Mike's been doing it since 1980, so that's 20, 30, 33 years. 33 years of paying attention to second to second, and he can still focus at that level. I've pulled back now. So I can push stuff around better than he can, but he's really a great moment-to-moment -moment guy. And by the way, just so you know, they are they are listening into this live. Anybody that's awake. So you can say hi to the Greybeards if you ever want to. I don't know if you ask if you ask them questions if they'll answer, but we'll have to find out if they have the ability to write. I suppose I could write on the chart. Anyway, this is where they should have filled me. <laughs> Good morning, Greybeards. The breakfast is on me because they had a they had a magnificent day yesterday. So 
pretty much almost every day recently they've been having breakfast, lunch, and dinner on me at nice, nice restaurants. <coughs> or I should say I'm Blackthorn. It's not really me. It's my company. All right, so if this is the pivot down here, it's 15 to make 54. That's 3 to 1, right? Last time I checked my math. It's not magnificent, but it's not bad, right? And if we get any time at all, should be in good shape, right? Wes says it's 4 to 1. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, we're doing the breakfast. It's Tuesday morning, we're doing the breakfast session for the other group. We're below the median line, retesting it from below. Fails. Done with the media. We're done with the breakfast group. Now I'm in the car on the way to Dr. Gary's. Now I'm out cold. Retesting the median line. Still getting the needles twirled. In a nice blissful trance. My back is feeling better. Oh. Blue to blue, or pink to pink, filled. Actually, I should have a hash mark there for you guys. Well, let me just grab theirs. Nothing greedy. Maybe a bit difficult in concept or artful in concept. How about that? But really, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Once you get the fulcrum idea down. So risking 15 to make 100. Somebody do the math for me, please. How's that, Rebecca? Seven to one? It's not bad for a day's work. More? Okay. That's where we started. Now let's see if we actually make the low. This is where we got out. Middle of the day on Tuesday, about the time I'm getting out of, uh, I'm getting home from Dr. Gary's. Actually, the mayor, Dwayne's coming over to uh, do stuff at the house. Okay, well, that this isn't actually the same low as you can see by a few ticks just because it's got an upward slope. But, we're ba yeah, we made the low. We made the prior low. So, if you wanted the prior low, sure. Where would I bring back my down my stops? Let me make a 10 pipper. Hang on. So we made the low low as well. And I think it was Jose that asked that question. But whoever did, yes, we made that as well. And that would have been a nice logical profit as well. But I just went for the 80% probability. Okay, so if we take this out, come out, and leave this, then take this low, you can do this if you want, because it's at the median line. And the next one would be, of course, here. That's the last one. You could do this as well. I'm sorry. Once you break below, if you're not doing this as a stop, you certainly should be at break even. That makes sense? Who asked if there's not one higher up? Yeah. Ikshan. Does that work, Ikshan? Let me straighten that one out. Looking at, at close on the last bar, thinking about a new C. Why not? Let's follow it off. We got let's it's only yeah, we got time. Wanna follow it up? Bob? All right. 
So let's open it up a little bit. Bob's saying we're at we're at prior lows really to the tick. So Bob says, what about this? Um, shit, I don't have any of those marks. Let me make one up for you real quick. Do, 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 do. That would be a blue. Bob wants to roll. Ah. I swear. Is there are there any recordings that, that I don't do this in? Ever? Come on, pop for me, fat boy. There it is. Howard, I just need a pivot marker, please. All right, so there's Bob's blue. Bob wants to go A, B, C, D. Or maybe a new, maybe he's hunting a new set of logic, okay? Tap the prior lows close on its high, right? That work for you, Bob, that description? Don't know, but let's follow it out. Okay, all right, so. Answer is no, but let's see what happens to this one. Here's the thing. Here's the added part of the logic. Ready? Somewhere in here, you're going to have to pick your poison. You're going to have to do this. Something like that. And one or the other have to win. If it takes out a high, you're in business, right? So now let's watch this one. Let's let's watch till we see something that looks interesting. Well, still doesn't now it's starting by the way, it's starting to look like I left extra money on the table. Are you listening to Graybeards? But that'd be my fault, not yours. In fact, let's let's move the more let's just for chuckles. We got time. Let's see if I can find the median line. Oh, my God. Anybody? Maybe. Yeah, there we go. There's the warning line. Now we got a warning line. How about that, Bob? So now I've got maybe a target where it should run out of energy, and we'll try and hunt a change in behavior. And by that, what I mean is I don't want A, B, C. I want a change in behavior. Right? Not just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I want to change the behavior. Show me something different. Because so far, all we're doing is highs, lows get taken out. 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 Haven't broken one high yet. Need it or this is a continuation down. That's right. Right? All right. Huh. Well, that's interesting. What do you think about that, Bob? Could be a wash, but just for chuckles. So here's what I do. Or actually what I really do on my charts, I just put a question mark. And then if it ends up being... If it takes out a high, then I'll pop one of these in, okay? But I'll put a question mark here, and then when it blows through, oh, never mind. Question mark, I like this close, and it, I like that the volatility's picked up. Let's see what we get. Is this a wash? So if it's a wash, I don't expect this to get taken out. I don't think that's horizontal. which is neither here nor that there to this being a change, has to take out the gray line to be interesting, right? Let's make this a red line, by the way, just so that we're color friendly. Takes that out, it's a change of behavior, right? And I'll even, I'll even, I'll even use Zigshan here.
Because I do all this. You see me do all these things to myself. For myself. Not to myself. Maybe a wash or at least one more buyer than seller. Right? Although a lot of activity. So maybe a lot of people were short. And when one person bought, some other people said, hey, not a bad idea. Right? Hmm. It has potential, Bob, don't you think? I know I need more, but it's got it's got potential. It it didn't pull back, made a higher high. Well, <clears throat> now it looks like a wash. But is this consolidation before we get further move to the downside, right? If you were still short, once this line happened, right? Make sense? Because we do want to practice boxes. Box, 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 box. Just keep that money. All right. Let's see what we get. Tempting, but not what we need yet. And, and to be honest with you, Bob, I don't know the answer. So maybe that's not enough for me. How about you, Bob? And now you see why. That could just be pixelation. How about that, though? Now let's let's check something here. Not the big swing on the board, but damn close. Bigger than this swing. So Bob wants one more. Okay. Now put in the median line. Look for test, retest. Oh, so you are going to roll it. Meaning you are going to use the other pivots. Yeah? See, the problem is I don't have an A. Well, do you want to use this? B, C, A? Yes? Is that what you're talking about? No, I want to, and I don't want that would work. I want to know what you were thinking. If that's what you're thinking, say, yep, that's what I was thinking. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm trying to understand your mind now. Either that or previous low for the blue line. Okay, well, hang on. Let's talk about that. Do you mean this low? Hang on. Okay, now I have a problem with that. I would not do that. Can anybody tell me why? It, well, here's the thing, Al. I don't know if it's a pivot. Do you know? Al says it's not a pivot. I don't know it's a pivot. Does anybody else know? And plus, it's forever ago. But I don't know if it's significant. I just don't know. So I wouldn't do it. And it's... Well, it's still only two days ago, but I just don't know. That's the that's my only question about it, Bob. Is is this the pivot? Is it? Now it might still give me frequency. That's not the point. All right. So you want to find out if it is, Bob? Just for chuckles? I didn't even look back. All right. But so let's. We don't do this, but let's do this. Well, there's a lower low. There's a lower low. There's a lower low. Eh. You see my point about I don't know where the, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I would probably say that this was the low. I think. Well, I yeah. You I, you can make that argument, Timmy. I'll give you that. Timmy says it's the low before this significant takeoff. 
I know Shane would say that, right? I'm not going to use his words, his three-letter three thing, but I know Shane would say that. Okay, that's fine. But I don't really know that. Let's go back. This is when I'm walking in the door. I don't really know it, do I? Because I don't know that we're not have that we don't have a significant takeoff over here either. It's to me, it's not clear. If you want to use it, that's fine. Let's draw. Let's draw both. How about that? Where are we? Okay, let's draw both. I'm. I mean, I'm fine with that. Okay, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to explain to you what I'm thinking, but that doesn't, again, let me say to all of you, I'm not trying to make Rebecca me, so to speak, and I'm not trying to make Bob me. I want you guys to be as good as you can be in your own form. You guys are going to see things differently than I do, period. Wes says he likes this format of questioning. Very helpful. Okay, so now let's. now you know why I'm not interested in this as an A, but you might be, and I'm okay with that. So... This isn't the B, correct? Does anybody like this as the B? Okay. Is this the B? All right. So there's one median line possibility. Now, I don't I think that's the Bob, this is the one you had in mind, isn't it? In a decent center. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll give that to you. I got, I have no, again, I have no problem with it all. Now take a look at it and think about the logic that we have sitting in front of us that we already know. I know you like this pivot, but I don't know what this pivot means. So what if, what if we use this B? I don't like this B. Even though the logically it makes sense, but it made sense for the fulcrum. But in terms of using it for the low, I don't like it because staring right in front of me is this huge run down, right? So it's just a bump in the road. But let's draw it anyway. Does anybody, everybody follow that? Do you see why I don't like my B either? <coughs> I don't like this B. I like this B. How about this? If I had to rank them, I like this B better than this B. With this median line, the center has a down frequency. Hmm. Well, let's, let's, let me draw the other one. Let me think about that. I, again, I like this median line less... Oh, this is what I see what you're saying. I can't use that. Let me use green on un, shift. So if we use this one, and this is why I don't like this median line. I know Shane draws these like these. I don't I'm not wild about these. They make me feel funny. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't give me anything anyway, does it? The blue median line, the median line looks like it's going through a wedge. Okay. So if I had to choose between this pivot and this pivot, I'm taking this pivot even though there's no logic for me, right? The green does nothing for me. And I wouldn't draw the green. You couldn't make me draw the green. Because the, the green... I can't draw it with this right in front of me. Now what I'm looking for is, here's a run up, here's a pullback, here's the pendulum pullback. This is, can anybody tell me what this is? Right, this makes no sense. What's this right here? Could be one, one of two things. Range extension or flowering? Run up, pull back, run up, flowering. 
Look at all the look at all the ground now. Boy, if I want to trade to the upside, if I had a skinny median line here, I don't have any range to play with. Now, if I can catch a long, look what I have to the upside. Can you see that? No? Yes? No? Now the field is wide open. You know, if I had a if I had one, if this was the low, well, let's let's make one up. Which would you rather trade, the black or the blue? Of course the blue, right? Uh, there was a question there I missed. Hang on. Kareem says, the, Tim, the blue median line, isn't that going opposite of the frequency? Uh, can you explain the question? First of all, I... I'd be hard pressed to draw this median line. Just because I don't like this pivot. You're saying that range extension is a key characteristic of the flower. Yeah. Right? This is the, this is, I mean, I'm fine with this, and it turned out to be a nice trade, and it's because of this run up. This range extension gave me this run down, which I got most of it. I'm fine with that. This run down is like this run up. If you catch a long now, you've got even more room, don't you? Hell, with a little bit of time, you've got more profit than even the run down on this because of the range extension. All right, Bob, you want to see how yours did? Bob, Bob, Bob. Come on, Bob. Bob. You here? Well, I'll just move it forward. All right, so now it looks like that's a good one. Can we catch a trade? Well, this is bottom of the wash. That's a maybe. Now it's Wednesday. Bottom of the wash is holding pretty good. There's your first test of the lower parallel. And range extension. Well, let's run it through and see what we get. And then I'm going to have a comment. All right, that's live. Now I got a comment for everybody. Uh, let me change chart properties. That's live. Now, do you see how this is? If I'd mark this as A and this is B and this is C, oh, let me do it again. If I'd mark this as A, B, C, and this was zero, how about this? Zero, A, B, C, and now you want to roll this as D. D. Everybody with me? So we're actually rolling the pivots. We're always marking advance. We're always marking alternate pivots. Does everybody see that? You guys still there? I'm talking to myself. I am talking to myself. I'm sorry. I missed all the questions. Oh, this new, this new go to me is killing me. I'm sorry. You guys are typing and it's like. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can grab. How about the wash entry? Don't like the test close. Could have used the neckline. Why not use the neck entry? Okay. Fire by rule on MLC. The wife's talking to me. Yeah. Need to break the high before considering the blue pitchfork. Then see if and when the price comes down 
would you apply your five bar rule before you get in? Okay. All right. So, okay. So, the propensity in this group and the other group is that you guys have to mark. Not only do you want to trade, this thing's moving up, you want to get long. Isn't that correct? You feel it tugging on you. I got to get long. Get me long. It's going down. I must be long. Get me long. I have to get long. All right, excuse me, short. I need to get short, right? That's what the mar that's what the market's paid to do. It's paid to get you to trade. That's what auctions are for. But if you mark every pivot just to mark every pivot, then you end up drawing this and this. And I would I would prefer instead follow this logic. I'm going to make this instead of a continuation A B C and draw on a median line. I'm going to mark this as an alternate pivot and I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. How about that? So it's going to be A, right? And I don't know where it's going to go. But because this is A, I never get caught up in any of this. I'm looking for something. Now, maybe this ends up being reality. I don't know yet. And I haven't even, I'm not even taking much of a look at it. And then maybe, but, you know, when I modify shift it and it's down sloping, eh. So maybe I throw it out. And in reality, as I look at the strength of the down move, okay, this is important to me. This makes logical sense. Do you see that? This pivot. And for me, this pivot sets up the fulcrum, and this pivot sets up everything, right? No? Right? Okay. I don't really have anything down here. And I don't even really have anything right here. What do I have? I've got a sideways market. Did anybody see a pivot or anything important going on here? I just basically have range extension, and now I've got sideways. And maybe this is a pullback. Maybe. But is it? Take a look at it. Part of my language, West says expanding pivots. I think it's kind of expanding crap now. So we had a beautiful flowering, and now what are we getting? These are the weeds. How about that? To use the analogy. And I don't see any logic that makes me want to mark this. Or this. The only thing I see, if you want the truth, BJ, how about this? Let me ask you this. This is the important pivot. This is the last important pivot. It runs down. This is as far as it's capable of going because of the weight of the sellers on one side of the lever. What do you think of that? Yeah, now let me see if I can draw that in with the yeah, I think I can. All right. So here's our here's our pendulum right here. This is the actual pendulum. So let me draw in a line. So here's our pendulum. So I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to put it through the pendulum. I'll change the color on it as well. Oh, that's the pendulum pullback that price would allow to happen with the weight of these sellers. Why couldn't which point be used as MLC? The here? 
Well, if you're going to give me that logic, I might be tempted. But here's my question to you, Al. Is this A, B, A, B, C? Let's draw that. Let's think about the possibilities here. A, see, this can't be B. I don't like this B at all. So that don't work. So what else could we draw? A, B, C. Well, that don't work. So we're going to go back to this one, but I don't even like this pivot, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and do it. And modify it. Okay. BJ says now modify it. Uh, I'm not going to fight with BJ. Let's change color so we don't get confused. <coughs> no. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Modified. All right. So BJ says that's what she sees. Now, BJ and Pat, that's what they see. Here's the middle of the fulcrum. Hang, um, I'll do, uh, Kareem, hang on one second. I'll do that as well. Here's the middle of the fulcrum. Now we're using, the hell did I draw? Yeah, I use the, uh, I used A. No, I used A. B, C, and modified shifted. All right, so now, and, and let's, you know, and we, we'll see. I mean, that, that looks like it's describing price. Now, your A is up top right here. Yeah, I got lost. It's okay, Al. Creep says, why can't you use the green line as a parable to a D and connect the bottom? Okay, why not? All things are possible, as my daughter told me yesterday, <laughs> over over dinner. It was a very long dinner. I'm getting to that stage. Never mind. I'll get it. I swear. Why not? Why didn't you like that as B? This? I mean, it's okay, but... Wes, I've already explained it before. Let me just say this again to everybody. I don't like rolling pivots. In other words, let me just, I got my alternate pivots. Let me just throw on the, the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. I don't really like to do that. I got short on the shift at 102.61. But got out for 50, well, at least you got 51 pips after it turned into sideways crap. Well, at least you got your 51 pips, right? It's pretty good, Connor. So Connor used the modified shift. I just, Wes, I try to mark them fresh. I got enough markets that I'm actually, there's nothing wrong, you know, you don't, I don't like rolling pivots or median lines, right? I like to reset each time because that allows me to do things like this, which are, to me, the essence of the market. Uh, okay, hang on, Jose. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up, Jose.
the fish pork seems to be respected at the lower level. Um, well, a lot of data, dude. Come on, you're looking at, what is this? I think I'm going to spank you in a second. How, what's the frequency of this? What bars are this, Jose? Are these 20-minute bars? Well, Jose, are we trading four hours? Fess up, dude. No, 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 no. Answer my question, please. No, we're not trading four hours, so we're not looking at a four-hour chart, are we? And should you be? I mean, unless you're trading four hours, unless you tell me I don't trade 20 minutes, I trade four hours. If that's your answer, I'll go, okay, thanks. That's fine. But if you look at multiple time frames, stop. And stop now. Pick your time frame. Be in your time frame, okay? And even for 480, it's a crap load of data. Yep. Well, if it's 15-minute euro, U.S. dollar, then you shouldn't even have this chart in your mind, okay? You're just hunting for median lines that work. But it, this is far too much data, just so you know. But, you know, it's a pretty median line. Again, Jose, I can make you a, a good chartist, or you can show me good charts, or we can make money. We, and I assume that's what you want, right? Is this MetaTrader? Yeah. Nice packets. I should actually show some MetaTrader charts. Um, okay. So the answer is, if, if you're trading four-hour yen, that's one thing. Otherwise, don't even look at it. Whatever you trade and trade it, period. Okay, so any other questions on that? So I, you know, I just don't like to roll them because that allows me to think about this. I want the logic at a significant pivot. And until we got to here, I didn't have a significant pivot. This is a B maybe, but the question was, where's A? And remember we said last time, B and A sometimes are dependent on C. This was clearly a C because of the pendulum to me. Yes, no. Now, I know you may walk around, walk away scratching your head. That's okay with me. It's food for thought, yeah. And, you know, I, I wasn't trying to do anything fancy. But, again, this is one of those things that just... This geometry does not come around all the time. And this is the, this actually, if you think about as long as I've been trading and drawing median lines, it's the first time I've ever thought of drawing a reverse median line modified shift. How about that? So I actually was kind of jazzed about the whole thing. I wondered if it was work, if it would work. So interesting. I don't know. Um, let me just clean up a couple things here. Because right now the graybeards are going, what the? What are you marking, dude? Are we drawing on this? Hopefully they're listening. No, we're not. We're not trading on this, guys. Slow down. I don't think we have any orders in right now, in this market. But let's go back to Aussie real quick since we're not out of time. And let's take that off. Okay, we're back to the original chart. You guys can go back to sleep, unless you're working an Aussie order. So let's go. Let's go to Aussie and see what happens. If maybe. And we're at 20 minute. So here's our Aussie mess. What was that? Have to figure out how to find market starting to, I need to identify methods to note flowering versus moving into ranging and crap to trade. This has been an eye-opening session. Good. That I'm going to do that. I'm going to do some of this for IB next Thursday, Bob. Um, and it won't be this detailed, 
But the reason why is in general, a lot of people end up trading in markets that are going nowhere. Oh, I won't, but Al, I won't put this out there. No, 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 no. I'll put, if this is 100, I'll put out of one. It, it'll just be the thought of why trade in a rangy market, right? You should be looking for big, fat ranges, big, fat areas to trade, not ranges. That's all. That's what that's all I'll be putting out. I'm not going to put this out there. I'm not even going to put this in the in the mid in the mid morning session. This is this is for you guys. It's not for anybody else. Okay, you won't you won't see the geometry I just showed you. You won't even see this in the mid midday session. Okay, it's just for you guys. You guys work hard. You deserve it. Okay, now you're seeing a live trade. We'll we'll see what happens to my trade. I don't know. I'm not that wild at the moment. I know. I see they haven't written back to me, but think the yen short is harder to see because it's trending higher, and in the midday that means buy pullbacks. Yep, absolutely. So, Wes, imagine me trying to explain that, and other than the people that are in breakfast session, have anybody get it? What do you What do you think the odds are anybody getting that? Mm-hmm. Just you guys. So I'd just be talking to you guys again. And I'd probably confuse everybody else, right? I'd have you guys agreeing with me. I'd have Shane dis agreeing with me. And I'd have everybody else going, huh? Or they'd be trying to draw that over every pullback and getting stopped out. And you know, it's not what I'm trying to do. It's the change in behavior that sets a tone. Yes, but that's a... That's a different change in behavior. It's one that I'm not going to put out in the public, right? Yeah, the, the zero, zero, the hash mark was the clue for that chart for me. That's exactly right, Jose. When I saw that, I actually didn't have a trade or an idea until I saw that. Then I went, oh, wait a second. We got a change in behavior, and now we've got a wedge. How's the wedge fit? If the wedge fits, I might have something here. Because we'll still, even though we're, okay, let me finish it out for you. I won't do it visually. I'm moving my hands. Even though we are now rotating to horizontal, which is what happened, we still made a new high, didn't we? But as we made the new high, we didn't, unless you know about the seesaw, we're making a new high with not enough weight to continue. That's going to be the last high. And then the seesaw or the lever comes into effect and it falls apart so that's a, that's getting as close to the bone as you can you're on the last rally and in that sense you're ready for the last rally before the last rally begins how about that if you if you want to be not lagging but trading in advance how about that uh one second two big ones do you think you used to intuitively use to trade this, but in attempting to justify to gray beards and to us, it fell together with vocabulary. Oh, Susan, I think when I describe it, it certainly, it not only cements it in my mind, but it also helps me clarify it. And I go, oh, you know what? It's nice, which is, you know, again, first time I've ever tried to do the modified shift backwards, but um, I might have seen it before, sure. Absolutely. That's, that's what I get out of this, Susan. As well as, you know, when you guys trade better, I also feel great. I, Timmy said, I was going to say earlier, the third or whatever dimension thing, but I thought I would have been nuts or out of context. No, not really. Not at all. Higher, high, but not really. That's exactly right. Yeah. Everybody see it? Think of a, think of a globe, okay? You're high, but you're, you're high at a higher high, but the globe is already rotated. So it's really not a higher high. But in the dimension that you're at, it still looks like a higher high. But if you could see the three dimensions, or the four dimensions, whatever you need, um, you go, oh, that's really not a higher high. But we can just, by math, we know it's not a higher high because of the fulcrum, right? Now, how would we have known that the fulcrum was wrong? That the you know we're intuiting that the load on the fulcrum was lighter on one side. How would we know if we were wrong? If we get stopped out, yeah, it's that simple. You know what? In trading, it all comes down to one thing, doesn't it? 
do I get stopped out? Or does the market make a new high, right? You pick your you you pick your you pick your side, you make your choices, you put your money on the line, then you win or you lose. That's what it really comes down to. But I, I, what I want you to do is to be able to see through my eyes. Have you taken any losers yet with gray beards? No, they're four, four for four. Well, we'll see what this one does. Well, this isn't going to be a loser. It'll be a profit target. They're either four for four or five for five. So they've been they've been eating on me. And let me just tell you, it's a hell of a restaurant, Bill. They're eating with gusto. Mucho gusto. Yeah, every... They haven't... I, I told them I'll buy until, they, until we have a loser. So, I need a loser soon. The loser... Oh, Ruth Chris? Hell. At least. Sure. Morton's, Ruth Chris. Well, what I make... I, what I asked them to do is whoever... May need to change their names. Roly polies. <laughs> what, uh, no, actually, I got them a... Uh, I gave them all a CrossFit membership. I don't know if they're going. It's up to them. They don't have to. There's a CrossFit about uh, four blocks away. If they can't walk that far. Anyway, um, I'm a great boss. No, I'm well. It's part of brokerage. I mean, I don't own this. I don't own this business. Mike does. But I mean, look at the fill. I mean, I can go to sleep knowing that they're taking care of me. Do you know what that's worth to me? A lot of dough, but also a lot of sleep. Yeah, I could be a I could be a Mastercard commercial, couldn't it? Sleep is priceless. It's like everything. So last night I didn't feel very well. I I was tired. I wanted to go to bed. I got the Aussie trade on, but it's okay. I have I have three trades on right now. It's okay because I said, you know what, guys, just take care of business. You know what to do. I got I got to lay down. I don't feel well. I think that was 8 o'clock at night last night. I just I said, you know, I don't know what it is. My stomach's upset. We ate some uh, we ate some prime rib that had been pre-cooked for us. And it tasted really good, but I don't, I don't think it sat well on my stomach. So I think it'll be the last time we'll buy from that company. But we're trying to get grass-fed, organic, everything. I'm allergic to beef, but I can eat it once a week. That was my once a week, and it wasn't worth it. So anyway... <clears throat> Let, any questions on everybody okay on the other one and is there any questions on the Aussie shoot a deer no actually I'm I've got a deer roast coming to me for the weekend I didn't get a tag but George you enjoy it good you take care today George okay any questions on Aussie otherwise I'm just gonna call it and go get ready for dr. Gary Okay. Have a good have a good uh, I don't even know what today is. Have a good Thursday. Um, I'm going to see one of you at mentoring and everybody else. I'll see you uh, midday on Friday. Take care.